Second up is Jan. A very uh, big hand for Jan, please. Thank you, Jan. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. And um, it's fantastic to be here. It's obviously impossible um, not to begin by, and my friends actually just behind me uh, this morning when I was talking to them said that uh, in Australia we always acknowledge our elders past, present and future. And so I want to acknowledge Kaumatu uh, in the room and all the elders. And again, as I say, past, present and future, which um, in Indigenous Australia is a very powerful uh, story about uh, young people coming through now and taking the baton on leadership um, in our country. Of course, it's also impossible not to stand up here and um, thank New Zealand for letting us in, um, Australians in. Uh, there been a, there was a little bit quiet. I expected like a massive shout out when they said who's in the room, but we're just so grateful that you allowed us to come um, because there was, you know, just a few issues that we had um, in the last few weeks, uh, and that's completely besides the rugby, which is another whole story. <clears throat> um, so thank you. So Australians will be sheepish but uh, optimistic and, uh, and happy, hopefully. Um, I've just realised that um, that's not the right presentation. So just <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> That's a presentation for Friday. So if you're coming to the session on Friday, uh, please come. So I'm going to ignore that presentation and you can shut it down wherever you are and I'm going to um, just go with, uh, without a presentation. Whoa! No pictures. So there are three distinct themes that I wanted to talk to you about today and three questions. And I hope that we can drive these themes and questions through the whole of the next three days and that you will genuinely and consciously ask people about these themes and about these questions um, as you go throughout the conference. The first one is this idea of disruption and I think that uh, Peter touched on it but I have a very strong view that we are um, widely known and understood to be entering the fourth industrial revolution. In fact, we're in it and the ideas of automation globalisation and a flexible economy um, are writ large in our lives and in everything we do. But the backdrop to that, which Peter spoke about, is incredibly important for us to understand and to step into. And the backdrop being this uh, focus on inequality, the, the very sustainability of the planet, and of course the um, idea that we are in, an, in a divided world more than we ever expected to be with geopolitical instability. And that these themes are driving us and driving our world in ways that we are not always even conscious of, but we must understand them in the context of what we are doing. And so the theme of disruption is for us to understand context and to understand and to question ourselves about whether we step up into our context enough and often enough. It's super easy to hang out in your bubble, in your enterprise and with your people. But our challenge is actually to be the disruptors. Now, I don't mean disruptors like when you're called a disruptor in Australia, it's code for kind of rat bag. But I mean more strategic disruption where we work together around the change that we want to create. There's a term that's going around the world or an acronym at the moment called VUCA. And it's being used in forums around the world, in governments, in the UN, and in big global business gatherings. And it stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And there is this strong view that FUCA is actually around us and that we are in this volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous time in history. And it requires us to think differently. It requires us to think about more than the one thing that we're doing, but to think about what the drivers of change are, the technology that will change and transform our lives every day in every way, and whether we are owning that or whether we're just receiving it. Are we the producers, the providers, or are we just the users? And I am interested that things like Davos this year, um, the big global gathering of leaders and business people and civil society uh, leaders spoke 
at length about the glacial pace of change in the world and the inability for governments to keep up with where we were transitioning and where we were going. Even in New Zealand, I heard a couple of weeks ago that 20 business leaders meet for 30 days a year just to talk about how they are going to advance New Zealand but also their business, how they're also going to frog leap Australia kind of into the rest of the world and what it means to be in New Zealand and driving change here. The second theme uh, and the question, sorry, that I want us to think about is this when we think about disruption. Are we curiously, openly and actively shaping the trends and shifts happening around us or are we ignoring them to pursue our own personal passion paths or even worse, dismissing them out of hand as the pure machinations of the oppressors? That's my question around disruption. The second theme is regeneration. Now, that's a word I use very carefully here because I know that's a theme for the rebuilding of Christ Church, but I want us to kind of put that aside for a moment and think about regeneration. Um, our disruption, and I, you know, Peter and I can debate this and do, but our disruption has mostly in the social enterprise sector to, to, to date been around market failures. But have we really disrupted the institutions and the institutional responses we see and understand to be the real system failures? The second generation of the internet is upon us and blockchain will break apart the old supply chain and give us ownership over data and information in ways that we've never had. This is massive institutional change at scale. This has the potential to create a sharing revolution like no other and it will move us on from the death stars as I described them of Airbnb and Uber with apologies to all the people running Airbnb and Uber and using it in the room um, but are essentially large modern day corporations. Yes, they're platforms but they're still operating in the old system. The strength of social enterprise being local but the ability to share, replicate and learn still eludes us globally. We may be purpose-led and we achieve individual outcomes, but are we leading society? And so my question is on regeneration. Are we ready and prepared to cede power to those whom we have previously served in the old social welfare systems? the homeless, those with disabilities, the women in Africa, the children in Cambodia that we talk about? Are we ceding power and giving to them rather than helping to serve them? Are we truly handing over power to the people for whom they want the change in their own lives? And are we prepared to rigorously, and I mean rigorously, challenge ourselves to build the new institutions that we so desperately need as the others fall away and fail us? And my third and final theme is what I would describe as the actors in this place, of which you are many, and there are many, many, many more around the world. And I want to, I want to talk to the theme of epic meaning meets urgent ambition. And I get the opportunity to work with young people in Australia and all over the world, young social entrepreneurs. There are more young people than ever before looking for purpose and meaning and to make a contribution than at any other time in the history of the world. And there are 1.8 billion of them, the largest cohort ever in the world of young people under 26 years of age. Over the past eight years in FIA alone in Australia, we've supported nearly 300 young social entrepreneurs, seeded them, backed them, invested in them, and we're growing 26,000 young student entrepreneurs in schools across Australia every year. But we fail our young people if we do not acknowledge old and new ways of working if we do not reach back into the past and also into our indigenous communities and roots and bring that thinking and that focus and that energy and that knowing to our future thinking. We fail our young people if we do not encourage them 
to what I describe as, not I didn't describe it actually, my very, very good friend, Pamela Hardigan, the late Pamela Hardigan from the Skoll World Forum and Skoll Centre for Entrepreneurship, talked about this idea of apprenticing the problem, that you must understand the systemic failures that you're trying to address. We fail our young people if we don't let them fail, or as we describe it at FIA, FLERN, which is hashtag F-L-E-R-N, which stands for failing while simultaneously learning, or another F word while simultaneously learning. <laughs> we fail our young people if we let them rely on their parents to support them in entrepreneurship forever. If we let them rely on prayer flags, sacrifice, martyrdom, heropreneurship, crowdfunding to get themselves off the dole. We fail them if we do not have the architecture of the 21st century movement and organisation described and evolving and iterating all the time. It requires clear understanding of context. It's a, it requires superior communication and storytelling skills. It absolutely requires collaboration and collective action. It, re it requires risk-taking. It's not our resources or our ideas or our programs or our services that are necessarily unique. It's our talent. No sector has talent like our sector. And we live by this mantra, which I want to leave you with at FYA. It's a very well-known one and first quoted by Abraham Lincoln, but then used widely by uh, Peter Drucker, the father of modern day management. The best way to predict the future is to create it. We have the most phenomenal opportunity to learn, to share, to grow and to play over the next few days. I'm sure we're going to do plenty of playing. But we also have the opportunity to create a future which is more equal, more sustainable, more inclusive. So let's put our hearts and minds to that task together at the Social Enterprise World Forum. Thank you.